here in Ephesians chapter 1, his expectation was that the Lord would say yes. But I have to also believe that his posture was such that he knew that his response to the Lord would also be yes. Amen? Amen. For often our expectation of God is that God will say yes to any and everything we place before the Lord. But the question comes, what will your response be when God speaks to you? Will your response be yes? Will it be well? Maybe. You know, kind of like when we were in grade school, we would write that little note, do you like me? <laughs> Check one, yes, <laughs> no, <laughs> or maybe. <laughs> Sometimes we'd be all right with a maybe, but God Almighty is waiting for a yes from each and every one of us. So, dear God, we thank you for who you are. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for your word, which has come to us today in the form of prayer. We thank you for the gift of prayer, for the ministry of prayer, for the presence of prayer, for the outpouring of prayer. Jesus. Hmm. Okay, 
that didn't do anything for you. <laughs> so we want to talk about what it is to build up in prayer. And each week this month, we are going to talk about a different element in the ways in which we build ourselves up. Today, we begin with prayer. Prayer as an essential part of our foundation of who we are as believers of Jesus Christ. And if you open deep into your worship folder, worship bulletin, you'll see a place for notes. And I even put the outline in there. So you just need to fill in what you want to remember for the week. Amen? Amen. I heard the cries of the needy. Pastor, you're making us write too much. So I heard the cries of the needy. So number one. Amen. Amen. I do listen. I do listen. I do listen. There is power in prayer. Do you know that to be the case? Yes. For prayer is one of the most precious gifts that we have ever received. Prayer is a blessing that rests in our lives. Prayer is also a tool, if you will, that we can use to equip us and to equip the world in our quest to connect with one another and to connect with God. It is one of the most powerful tools that we can use as children of God. Remember, the disciples, Jesus' followers, came to Jesus and they asked him, Jesus, will you teach us to pray? <coughs> they didn't say, Jesus, teach us how to make a whole lot of money. Jesus, teach us, you know, how to swell our egos. Jesus, teach us how to build a big church on the corner. No, the question they asked was, will you teach us to pray? Jesus responded, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver. lesson he taught them was that when you pray, pray for all. And you say, well, no, that's not what he said. Well, he did. It's implied. For what's the first word in the prayer? Mm. to take our order and to fulfill it down 
to the most minute of details. Oh, and God help you if it's not right. Uh -oh. If it does not come the way we ask for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I prayed those prayers. Am I the only one? I mean, you know where you order it up and you tell God exactly how it needs to go? And because God is so big, I mean, because we're so big and bad, we sit back and wait for it to show up. And when it doesn't, whoo, then we short your tip. <laughs>
humbling yourself before God means that you, that, that you, you do this because you trust God and you know the importance of including God in the conversation. Know the importance of including God in the in your daily developments. See, it takes an humble person to know that that you didn't get from yesterday to today because you're cute. It takes an humble person to know that you didn't get from last year to this year because you did everything right. It takes an humble person to know that you didn't get from five years ago when you didn't know what a way was to today knowing that the Lord made a way. You didn't get here because you were so important. But you got here because you are important to God. You see the difference? Let's try number two. <laughs> Prayer keeps our needs before God. Mm -hmm. See, and we, we share our needs with God, and notice it, it, it's about our needs. And if you look in that prayer that, 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 uh, that was in our scripture, Paul lays out what the body needs. Not what the body wants, but what the body needs. See, the difference is the needs are the must-haves. They are the essentials. My mom would always tell us when we would go to the store, when we get out this car, Oh, y'all had the same mama thing? Y'all had that same speech? You're picturing it, right? You're picturing it. You're picturing it. You're picturing it. She's putting on lipstick, eyeliner, doing the whole nine, looking in that mirror, but talking quite plainly. When we get up this car and we go in this store, don't ask me for nothing. Don't touch nothing. Don't put nothing in my basket. Don't come running up in behind me talking about mama, mama. When we get in the store, forget my name. Because I have a list. I am only getting what is on this list. And what is on this list is what I need. Because my 
impacting my attitude. And my attitude is impacting my posture when I come before you. Because see, here, here's what worry looks like in, in, in the prayer world. Oh, y'all not getting that? It, it looks like this. <laughs> Here you go, God. No, I got it. Here you go, God. No, I got it. Here you go, God. Can you handle it? Here you go, God. Ooh, I've had this a long time. Here you go, God. I don't know. Here you go, God. Well, I'm waiting on you to do something. Does that appear sane? It feels normal. It feels natural. But it's something to work on, right? It's something to work on. And do you ever meet anybody who says, oh, I don't worry at all. I never worry about anything. Just smile, and then number two on your prayer list is that person, all right? <laughs> <laughs> number three, prayer seeks a divine response. We see this in Paul's prayer here in Ephesians because Paul is not praying to himself but he's praying for the people, but he's praying to God. He's not expecting the people to do anything except to be faithful to God. But the expectation is that God will intervene, that God will show up, that God is present, that God will do what God needs to do on behalf of the body. <clears throat> See, when we pray, and this connects with our our one of our points from last week, that if you can solve the problem, then and solve the problem. See, if you can work out the response on your own, then work out the response on your own. Prayer is about seeking a divine response. Divine response. That, that movement, that, 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 that opportunity, that vision that only could come from on high. It's not something we could all get together and make happen. If we could all just get together and make it happen, then let's just get together and make it happen. <laughs> that would be fun. That's fun when we all get together. I mean, we set a goal and we all get together and we, we just, ooh, ooh, look, look at what we did. Look, look at what we did. Ooh, this is, this is fun. <laughs> but when we get together and we pray for that thing that we know we can't make happen on our own and we put it before God and, and what we do is we do our part, amen? We do what we can do. We get it as far as we can get it, and then we let that divine response come in where the human reactions have let go and let it loose. Then we can say, wow, not only was it fun, but it's amazing what God has done in our midst. Amen. See, I think sometimes we, we, we're okay with fun. We're okay with getting a little credit. We're okay with getting a little glory. And that's why it never goes beyond what we can do, what we can accomplish. But what prayer is for, it's for those times when we really need a divine response. Mm. Mm. All right, you only got this last one. We all the way to number four. Prayer strengthens the person who prays. Strength comes from knowing we've done all we know to do. And now we're going to see God make a move. See, that inspires me. That motivates me like ooh. you mean God is listening God is paying attention God is honoring my faithfulness oh okay okay got it Paul in this prayer Paul prays that they know God's love is boundless not that they 
experience wrath or chaos to teach them some great lesson in life, but he prays that they know that God's love is boundless. Beloved, God wants us to know that God is love. And that God's love will never fail. That God's love will never run out. It will always be present. It's always active. God shows God's love for us in the ways in which God responds to us in providing for our needs. That they will know God's love is boundless. And you think about those places, those situations, those relationships that in your life where if you just knew that God's love was boundless, how different would those situations, those places, and those relationships be? Matter of fact, if you just think about your own life, and the ways in which you think about yourself. If you had a true understanding, a true comprehension that God's love is boundless, came home one day from school, just crying, crying, crying. I told y'all I'm a crybaby, right? I told you, I told you. So you can't use that against me, right? Came home from school, crying one day, got off the bus. My mom said, boy, what in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> she didn't have much patience. So. <laughs> boy, what in the world is wrong with you? <laughs> and my daughter only came home from school crying. <laughs> change who you are as a person. All they used were words. Now get in there and get out your lesson and stop all this crying. <laughs> but the message I take from that, beloved, is that when we know that love is bound when it comes to us, right? Because when people say things to us, or they do things to us, we go to that place where we feel as though we're not loved, that we're not good enough, that there's something wrong with us. But when we go before God in prayer, that in and of itself is a reminder that God's love is boundless toward us. 
So say whatever you got to say. Do whatever it is you feel you need to do to make you you. But know that at the end of the day that God's love is boundless. And what you say and what you do will not change who I am in the eyes of God Almighty. And when it's all said and done, that is the only thing that matters. So, beloved, from this point forward, whenever you pray, remember that, this, that, that, that prayer is about you. It's about God and what God's trying to work out through you or in spite of you. Amen? Amen. 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 